Good morning, everyone. Uh, sorry to brag, but look at the beautiful scenery behind me. I'm so happy to host this uh, webinar from uh, their last resorts. And uh, we have a fantastic uh, host today that he's gonna talk about uh, sport fishing. But first, I'll give you some updates about our beautiful destination. So uh, I don't know if you guys knew, but uh, Los Cabos had been uh, closed for more than three months. And that uh, we reopened our doors on June 15th with 30% of our capacity. The destination, of course, will be gradually opening hotels, restaurants, and tour companies in order to ensure our visitors safety. I am very proud to let you guys know that we are already uh, reestablishing our uh, air connectivity and uh, every service provider or partner will follow this strategic approach and needs to be certified in order to be open. We're gonna have flexible bookings and reservation policies. And of course, we have the health and safety standards protocols and uh, certified by the WTTC, as well as a Punto Limpio certification in place. Next, please. So uh, the reopening phases go like this. We started in June the 1st with a safety and control uh, perception letting, uh, I mean, finding what was, it, what was the perception uh, of you guys. And of course, putting together the mandatory abiding uh, manual um, that talks about hygiene and standards. Uh, the COVID-19 Los Cabos seal that applies to hotels. And as I said before, the hotels will be reopening um, gradually the restaurants and attractions as well. And uh, the timeshare started to arrive on this date. The stage two begins on July the 2nd because we'll, we, we will be reopening uh, the terminal two of the airport. And uh, of course, we will see an increase, hopefully, of international arrivals and domestic arrivals as well. Uh, stage three will begin in August and uh, until September, and uh, these will be all the groups and wedding reservations that were postponed. Stage four starts in October, and uh, that's when uh, the groups will uh, start coming, and 60% uh, of the reservations that were postponed pre-COVID-19, and of course, we're expecting the luxury travelers and our dear friends from Canada and the UK. Stage five, however, will start until 2021 with 60% of uh, air connectivity reestablished and 80% uh, of the reservations recovered. And uh, we're hoping that uh, all the leisure travel will be here by that time. Next, please. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna ask you uh, just a question. After being in your houses or apartments um, indoors, basically, uh, for more than three months, why would you come to Los Cabos as a first destination? Well, I'm going to give you some facts of uh, why you guys should come here first. Because we have super high quality services and exclusive personalized uh, experiences, super important and uh, there's this sense of space even if the hotel will be at uh, I don't know maybe 60 or 70 percent of uh, its capacity you will never feel that you're crowded another good thing about uh, Los Cabos is that we have small and medium hotels with an average of 220 rooms and well Nobody can compete with us when it comes to having the Sea of Cortez, the desert, and uh, the mountains all together. And we're gonna launch a new wellness product that will be out of this world and unique to Los Cabos. And we all are in so much need to be in contact uh, with nature. So uh, uh, like really, 
this is why Los Cabos is unique. Next, please. So for the people that haven't been to Los Cabos or to give you guys an idea, well, uh, you guys will arrive at the airport and then it'll take you just 15 minutes to get to beautiful San Jose del Cabo. Then uh, in between San Jose del Cabo and Cabo San Lucas, you guys will find a tourist corridor. Uh, the hotel where, am I, where I am at right now is in this uh, tourist corridor, which is fantastic because uh, there's no uh, like billboards to not let you see the beautiful uh, scenery. And then I call the new uh, spots on the or Los Cabos, uh, the new kids on the block. So you, you're gonna find uh, the Pacific area that have beautiful hotels, like for example, the Nobu Hotel. And then we have the East Cape, all, and you will be passing Cabo Pulmo, which is an underwater fantastic uh, park. And uh, you're gonna find in the East Cape as well, beautiful hotels. As you guys can see, there's place to grow. So even if we're gonna open more rooms, you will always feel this fantastic sense of space. I advise you guys to go to the East Cape, um, maybe rent a car or something, because uh, there are some spots perfect uh, to take even a picture for Instagram. It's really, really pretty. Next, please. So now, we come to the fun part of uh, the webinar. I'm very happy and thankful uh, to Enrique Fernandez Castillo because he's gonna give us a wonderful explanation about uh, sport fishing in Los Cabos and why it's so important for the destination. He has been the president for the Mexican Billfish Foundation 30 years running Marinas in Los Cabos, co-founder of uh, the Mexican Marina Association. And uh, well, ma, this is uh, quite impressive, 47 tournament organizer, Cubar, 50 yachts coming every two years from San Diego Yacht Club. Co-founder of uh, Baja uh, Jaja, 130 sailboats coming every year from California. So I think you guys are gonna really enjoy uh, this presentation. And uh, well, Enrique, the screen is all yours. Thank you, thank you very much. I would like first to, to, to thank you for the opportunity to talk about sport fishing in Los Cabos. Um, as everybody knows, Cabo is known uh, uh, to be one of the best uh, sport fishing spots in the world. And I think that, uh, it, that, a thou that an image says more than a thousand words. So I would like to start my presentation with the following video. Sorry.
all the information that I'm going to be presenting comes from different sources, including the, the Bill Fish Foundation and the Sport Fishing Foundation. Unfortunately, the number for 2019 has not been published yet, but uh, we have the information for 2018. And the difference with 2019 is less than 1%. So, so basically the information is good. And I also would like to talk about uh, the market. Our market is 97% uh, are Americans and 3% uh, are divided by the rest of the countries, including Mexico. Of course, during tournaments, we receive uh, uh, anglers that come from all over the world, including Europe, uh, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Puerto Rico, many spots from different places, but year round, they are not that important for the statistics. Therefore, I will be using 2018 statistics from the United States. In, in 2018, there were a total of 5.8 million uh, Americans that, that uh, do sport fishing. And from that 51.8 million people, which is a lot, 12.8% uh, do it from the, in salt water or prefer to do the activity in salt water. That's 12.8 12, that's 12 million uh, Americans. In Los Cabos, in 2018, we received uh, uh, 500,000 anglers or 4% uh, of uh, the American market that is coming to, to fish in salt water. We have a way to grow. We have a lot of opportunity to continue growing. It's, we are, we, the, we're talking that, that there is another 96% that we have to, 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 that we want to bring into Los Cabos. Of course, when, when you're talking about uh, uh, the people traveling, uh, we have to consider the timing from, from the United States to Mexico. And this, this is very important for us because we have 44% of the, the participants in sport fishing are willing to travel uh, overnight. This is a very good number. So it doesn't matter if it's going to take them one extra night to come and fish in the right spots. And 78% are willing to travel between two to four hours just to get to the right spot to do sport fishing. Um, we have, a, this is the demographics uh, or the way where the people are concentrated for sport fishing. Of course, South Atlantic is very important. Uh, Florida is, is a mecca of absolutely everything related with boating, but also the South Atlantic has to compete with other destinations such as Bermuda, Bahamas, Caribbean, Virgin Islands, all of them have great fishing. In the case of Los Cabos, we have, of course, the, the West Coast is very important for us. We receive, I would say, 50% of the market that comes to do sport fishing comes from Southern California. It's our main market. But we're also having a very good uh, position in the market of Central America, uh, sorry, Central, Central United States, especially Texas. Keep in mind that Houston is closer to Los Cabos than Florida to, to Houston. And yes, we also are having an interesting uh, uh, participation also with the people of, of the South Atlantic uh, because uh, we are considered to have uh, uh, in a much more longer time, period of time during the year, good species to, to catch. So these are our main markets and this is where they come from. Now a little bit about demographics. I'm going to go very fast on this. We, of course, in order to go sport fishing, we know it's, it's a costly activity. Therefore, it is important uh, to focus on the on adults. And we have 82.5% of the adults. But it's also important to understand that 30% of all our market, the core uh, of, of our market, is between 45 years and 64, 64 years old. Um, related with, with the, the capacity, the, the economy, of course, we're looking for 50,000 and over. Of course, there can be always, uh, there will be uh, cheaper boats for, for people with less revenue. And I think this, this, this uh, graphic is not very good because that 31.3 at the top should be divided uh, in half and should consider 15% receiving uh, income higher than $1 million. And 
many people say, well, people that go fishing, they, don't, they are rudimentary people, they are rustic, uh, they don't have too much education. No, it's completely the opposite. They have very high education, 63% cap uh, from college. Now, the, the, the number of people that go out fishing in a year, we have 36.3% people, uh, people going from one to three times. In our case, in Los Cabos, we're looking for those that, that comes for the longer time. And, and it's very, inter very easy to understand that because usually when you have a, a person coming either to a tournament or, or their base uh, planning for coming to Los Cabos is sport fishing, they always uh, think on spending three days fishing. You know? so, so our, our target is always to consider people that are going to come 12 times or go out fishing at least 12 times to 104 times in a year. This gives us a very, a very high rate of return of people coming back every single month. Uh, as, in, as in any activity, you have people that stop doing the activity and new people doing the activity. Uh, the, the, the percentage for us is positive, is 9.6% of new participants in sport fishing, which is very good for the long term. It's a good number. Um, people that, that, that come fishing and do other activities, we have 78.5% of that. Of the, that people usually do, space is very important, especially for the companions that come with the people to, that is coming for sport fishing. Golf is very important. Also, scuba diving is also important, plus other activities. But this is a very important number. One of the things that I want to, to emphasize is that if you're selling uh, both a sport fishing trip plus a golf trip, you have to consider first uh, that, that they go play golf and then they go fishing. Because when they go fishing, usually you move your arms and the muscles of your arms differently. And, uh, and you're using a lot of, of stress when you're, when you're catching a fish. So usually golfers that go first fishing, when they go later to play golf, they will lose your swing. That's a fact. So it is, please keep in mind that it's always important to consider playing first golf and then going fishing. Well, the other thing, we have 42.5% a, a of people that charter a local boat for going fishing. Usually it's a small boat. I will say 35%, 90% goes out in a, in a 35, 35 feet little boat. And we have a big number of people that have their private uh, uh, yachts, 57%. And that's very important because this means that it's people that are coming back to Los Cabos every single month. And if they are not coming back because they have the, this big toy, which is your boat, you can get most of your friends that usually they have the same zip code. So we're talking of a very interesting market for sport fishing. You can go out fishing in a small vessel. Again, 25 feet, a small panga. You can go to a more sophisticated panga uh, with, with, a, with a center cabin, or you can go in a Boston whaler. We get into, into brands now of, of different, different kind of boats. You can go in a jet with a cabin. That's very common. Uh, usually it's very important to have a cabin, have a bathroom inside the boat so people can go in and out comfortable. And of course, we have other sizes of boats. It can go all the way out to, to even 100 footers. The, the, big, the big boat I'm showing in this, the last one right here at the end, is an 80 footer. That will cost you, in a normal day, will cost you pretty close to $4,000. During a tournament, it might cost you $8,000. This is, this is the, the calendar for fishing. And, uh, and as you can see, we have very good fishing for striped marlin. Then blue marlin uh, and black marlin start uh, from May to December, and their biggest months are July, August, and September. The main species that attract sport fishermen are these two species, black, blue, striped, sorry, striped marlin is also very important. And then what we consider secondary species, which is dorado and tuna, that we have all year round. So uh, uh, what we have of importance of the species for, 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 for the sport fishermen is that they, they are always challenging themselves to get the bigger and most heavier animal possible. Uh, and, and, that, and this is the importance that they give to, to each species. Again, our marlin, marlin, marlin goes first and then comes the rest. Um, 
the best time for sport fishing in Los Cabos is during the summer. Unfortunately, during the summer, we're subject to a very similar thing to Florida, but also subject to storms, weathers, and you have to, to be sure you aren't getting into that. And, but it's the best time for fishing by far. It's when we have more, more species all year round. I'm sorry, more species of all, of all the ones that you can catch. And uh, what we do uh, in purpose for, in order to have the tournaments is that we concentrate most of the tournaments during October or November because we still have very good fishing, especially with the big animals. And we concentrate the tournaments here because we know that this is, that this is going to work like turning on the break for the high season in Los Cabos. Of course, the weather improves tremendously during, the, during those months. Um, Sorry for that. Here is the list of tournaments that happen in less, I will say in these two months. And as you can see, the total amount of prizes that, that are given away with the tournaments is $6.2 6, million. There, it is very hard to find another destiny worldwide that will give you this amount in prizes to the general public that participate in a fishing tournament. Now, I also want to emphasize that these are the big tournaments, but we have tournaments all year round. These are the big ones, these are the ones that attract the people, but we have tournaments in almost every single month. Again, this is a marlin. Many people have asked me, well, how it works? Actually, we weigh the fish. We don't, we don't measure the fish. What we do is we weigh the fish. I'm and, sorry uh, to interrupt, Enrique, but I am very, very, very impressed with this marlin black blue stripe it's gigantic well the real tree is not that big <laughs> uh, the really? biggest marlin yes the biggest marlin i have seen in los cabos is 1045 pounds so this is the, the half of that size so oh, wow. yes it gets it, it we can really get big animals in this case with this big marlin that you see here in the first picture uh, uh, the, 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 this marlin was a, a 525 pounds, keep that on mind, I will show you later why. And they won uh, $125,000 in that tournament. Now, Dorado, Dorado is also very important. That's a big size, Dorado. I, I will say it's pretty close to 1, 1.6 meters. Can I tell you that it's my favorite, favorite fish in the world? Well, as I, with, with, it's the best taste from my point of view. It's a very, very good fish, but we don't try to, to have, we, we avoid as much as possible to have commercial fisheries or, or killing too much Dorado, because remember that the big marlin eats Dorado. It's part of their, their food chain. So, so if we get, get rid of Dorado, we're, we're shutting part of the, the food chain of the marlin. Now, Wahoo, Wahoo, Wahoo is, a, it is known in other places as Barracuda. Uh, the, 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 it's part of the family of the Barracuda, but the Wahoo is also delicious. It's, it's really very good, very good fish. And we have a special tournament in San Jose only for, for Wahoo. And then tuna, tuna, we have tuna all year round. And this is a small tuna. I have seen tunas the size of, of, uh, of uh, 300 pounds. So, so these are the main spe species that are going to bring people to, the, to Los Cabos. The people are looking for these species. Now, remember I told you that the, the marlin was 525 uh, pounds? Well, if he had fished that fish the following year, he will have won $3 million. This, is, this, this price, as you can see below the level of first place plus daily, says 510 pounds. So this guy, anyway, did three million dollars in one as one single in one single tournament. So Los Cabos is known because of that. We have big box tournaments in Los Cabos and that attract a lot of people. People says, well, you have to have a lot of knowledge about sport fishing. No, you have to have a lot of luck. Uh, what about the people that are coming? We have people that come to the tournaments and they don't go out in the tournament, they just sponsor the team. That's, that's, that's how far this goes. There's a lot of gambling related to, to this, but uh, related with sport fishing. People saying, okay, I, I'm going to, to put, who knows? What do you mean by gambling? 
gambling is, gambling is that, that you are going to follow uh, luck to see if you are going to get the big fish. Uh, uh, um, not all of it is, is, is knowledge. Yes, there is a big part of knowledge, I would say 30%. There are people that are very interesting. There are two, two guys in Los Cabos, uh, uh, captains, that they will charge you if you hire them $5,000 per fishing day in a tournament. And, and they will ask you for 10% of the total price, but they guarantee you, you are going to get, uh, you are going to get it back during the tournament. These are champions, it's, these people have won a lot of tournaments in Los Cabos as well as in the rest of the world. They, they, they fly them out from Los Cabos to different places to participate in other tournaments. Um, uh, Enrique, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, we have a question that I think it's super important. Um, they are asking, will you share a list of tour operators we can reach out for reservations for clients interested in fishing? Of course, no problem. Okay, thank you. So, uh, we, we Erika, we're going to send you um, the response uh, pretty soon. Thank you for asking. And remember, guys, uh, our presenter is really, really good at what he does so any questions uh, that you might have Enrique will be happily uh, answering them. Yes. One common question I'm going back one slide again sorry for that but many people say so you're killing fish like crazy that's not right uh, uh, shame on you all these kind of things what we do here is differently first of all if you if you if we're running a tournament, you have to have a, a marlin bigger than 300 pounds. So to give you an example, if we're having a tournament where we have 700 uh, anglers or or participants or 800 anglers, uh, usually we get at the scale less than seven fish. So we're not killing crazy fish like 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 many people think. We don't accept uh, whoever brings a fish that is lower than 300 pounds is punished during the tournament. They get points against the following days. Now, during the normal year, in most of the part of the year, what we ask the customers is take the photo at the boat, please catch and release the fish, put it back. Many people still want to hang it. I will say that 60% still want to hang their fish some of them want the taxidermist, which is not any longer as, as it used to be. Now is, what size was your marlin? 600 pounds, okay. We call Florida and from Florida, we'll send you a, a fiberglass fish that will look exactly the same than the fish that you caught. And we have, of course, minimum weight for all species. We try to protect all species. We have to protect the, 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 food of ch the chain of food of all species in the area. Uh, we also have another important thing, which is the, the circular hooks. Circular hooks uh, are very easy to, to release the fish. It's very, it's, it's, you, you can bend it very easily and liberate the fish. And also it's biodegradable, so the fish will not, will not finish having the hook forever. So we, th those are the rules that, that we follow. In the case of Dorado, Tuna, Wahoo, and the rest of these species. But we say to the customer, are you going to eat it? Okay, take it. If you're not going to eat it, give it back to the ocean. Don't kill it. So it's not, it's not a game of killing. It's, it's we're moving from that concept toward conservation and keep it in the sports arena and not, not, not killing fish like crazy. Anyway, as many, many, many years ago, people used to take in, in, in IHS tons of fish, uh, and, and to, the, to the United States, but not any longer. Thank God, uh, the airlines charge a lot for the excess uh, in weight with, with, with your luggage. So no, it's not happening any longer. You don't see that any longer in the airport as it, as it happened before. The, uh, the, again, this is, this is, these are the rules of one of the tournaments, one of the most complex and the richest tournament. How it works? Well, if you're going to participate in the tournament, you have to buy, to pay $5,000, that is the entry fee. No, if you don't pay the $5,000, you cannot participate in the tournament. Then comes what we call jackpots, uh, and we have it of different levels, in this case from five, $500 uh, all the way to $10,000, 
but you are forced to participate the three days of the tournament. That's why it comes to these figures. The release uh, category is $2,000, and I will explain how it works during a tournament, the catch and release uh, division. So in general terms, if you want to participate in the richest tournament in the world, you will have to pay $71,500, and then you're, you can win it all, to say like that. They open a new division with $60,000. Um, they, there were two teams that participated, and of course the money was given back because none of them won. No, but what is important is, is that this is the way we scale everything. Now the jackpots, uh, how it works, I'm bidding, I'm bidding that I'm going to win the tournament. I'm bidding on myself. The angler is coming and say, okay, I'm going to get the biggest marley, okay? And I would like to participate in this division. I, I can do it separate. I don't have to go in order. I can go directly to the $30,000 or I can stay in $6,000 whatever. Again, it works this way. You are bidding in yourself. Once you win the tournament, uh, you will be subject to taxes in Mexico. All, all tournaments are subject to 15% uh, withholding taxes for the activity. Otherwise, it will be illegal. Um, this, the, the important part of the re release category, many people ask me, I, well, I don't like the idea that, that you're killing fish. That's a uh, dark... Uh, blow in your eye, all these kind of things. We're pushing catch and release as much as possible. And the way it works is that you go out fishing, we, we, you call radio control, you say that you, you, you hook a fish and they have to start be, uh, making a video, uh, one straight, a continuity, and we have to see how the, uh, the fish is, is is, 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 has been brought next to the jet, so you can distinguish what kind of fish it was. You have to see that the, the leader, which is part of the line for fishing, touched the, the tip of the, of the pole, the fishing pole. And then we have to see how it is released and go swimming away. They have to show the number, the number of your team. And we always ask them for some gesture, you know, like uh, pull your ears, bring your tongue out uh, or grab your friend or put your hat uh, backwards and things like that. And we have to see that in the video, otherwise it's disqualified. But what happened with, with this division is that usually the people that have some experience, they will present the video for minutes. Uh, people that don't have any experience and are doing it for the first time, it can take them half an hour each video. And you, during tournaments, in a, we can get pretty close to 300 uh, videos in the three days. So this is very difficult for, for, to, for the tournament organizer because it's very difficult to see all, the, all, all those videos and, uh, and rule it. One, one of the things is that if it is missing, one of the concepts requested will be disqualified. But we're pushing this division and it's growing. Little by little, it's growing, 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 and growing. And, and I'm pretty sure that that probably between five to 10 years, all tournaments will be catch and release and not kill them. We'll, we'll see. It, right now, the market's still asking to, to hang the big fish. So that's the way it is working. Um, for me, this is something very important, is the customer loyalty. 67% of uh, sport fishing and participants, uh, say, they say before coming to Los Cabos that if they have a good experience, they will come back. No, that's, that's people on their arrival. And then people who, who, who are leaving Los Cabos, we have 43% of them that do their reservation before leaving Los Cabos. Then 22% of the participants in fishing participate in all the tournaments. This is big, way, way high. We're talking that there is people that are spending pretty close to half a million dollars just participating in tournaments regardless of the cost of the hotel, regardless of food, regardless of beverage, regardless of the rent of the boat, whatever. But this number is very, very important. Another important for us is that 40% of them use, use their price to buy timeshare or real estate. For us, it's very good because the money stays in Los Cabos. Um, about what everybody's talking about, Corano views. We have we're working in the protocol as we speak. Little by little, we're learning of new things and we're adding it to our protocol. We have already taken some, some uh, 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 training from the government, uh, but 
But what I want to do with this presentation is just to show you what is different. Uh, that, that ball has to be clean daily. That's the rule of thumb. It, ha it, it happens anyway without or with coronavirus. That's the way ball has to be pristine every single day. Impolute. It has to be impolute. That will be the right word. Also now, it has to be clean inside perfectly. Uh, it has to be very, very important to have a good cleaning inside. Then this is what is different. All the fishing gear, whatever, even a pocket, just, just the simplest uh, element has to be taken in, inside the cabin of, of, the, of, of, the, of the boat. Because we use ozone. Um, all boats are buying the ozone generators and um, you shut down the, the cabin, put half an hour ozone, and it sanitizes absolutely everything. Kills all viruses, kill anything with life, will be killed with ozone. It's, 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 it's not uh, expensive. Again, the cost, probably the, the cost of the equipment is $100, it's not a big deal. But those are, this is one of the things we're doing. So everybody knows that early in the morning when you're going to go fishing, everything is perfectly clean and has been sanitized. We're got, the port is putting some, some sanitation tunnels uh, to the docks. Uh, so, so basically everybody that comes into the docks will be clean. Of course, our workers have to show up clean and with a uniform. We, we measure the temperature uh, as, and I think uh, all our customers are going to get tired of that, but even they are going to be checked at the airport, they're going to be checking in, in the hotel, they're going to be checking the, uh, before they get the transportation, all these kind of things. And we add this one here, which has been very effective, especially in Taiwan. Uh, sorry, not Taiwan, South Korea has been very effective. It's being used a lot in Europe now, and we are already adapting this, which is an oximeter. It measures the oxygen that you have in your blood. If you have less than 92% of oxygen in your, in, your, in, in your blood, you get out. And we're talking also of customers. This will be applied not only to our, to the crew of the boat, but it will apply to our customers. Of course, we have, we'll have the sanitation uh, for the shoes. Remember that usually people that go out in, a, in, a, in any boat, uh, they do it with their barefoot, but this will be for the shoes and then go directly to a basket. For me, it's very important, this one here, we have to have a checklist of absolutely everything. And before, before uh, you're going out, uh, you as a customer, you will see our checklist and you will have the chance to check it again when, when, when you are finishing your trip to be sure that we're using all the proper measurements. Washing hands, rule of thumb now. Of course, masks and gloves and some, some, sometimes here we are having uh, many different information we're learning too. We will continue having the sun, the, the hell, the alcohol hell, and we're going to provide also cream because uh, once, you, once you put yourself the, the, the hell, remember it will dry your skin and if you're at the sun, you're going to get a very bad sunburn. So, so, so we're considering that. Sanitizing the food that we're going to provide on the boat. We're going to follow what the, the restaurant chambers uh, that we have here in Los Cabos are doing. Uh, they are using a clean point uh, uh, special certificate, uh, and we're going to buy from them. We, it's a long process, we cannot do everything, so we're going to only use those that got that certification to be sure that your food comes in perfect conditions to the boat. Uh, same thing with drinks and beers and all these kind of things. We will con constantly sanitize. And yes, we're going to get whatever certifica certificate is, is needed. And this is like a changing thing. It's happening little by little. We have a 50% chances to take a, a boaters right now with, with the, because of the social distances. We have a special protocol for, for bait. And most important, and this one here, is we're learning. Every single day, we're learning. We have to learn through the computer, YouTube, whatever. Any information, we filter the information with other things compared and added to our own protocol. Thank you so much. This has been a wonderful, wonderful presentation, my dear Hi. Enrique. But I would like uh, to finish our session today uh, just with uh, two questions. What amount can the people bring back to the States? That's Sorry? one of them. Sorry? 
Again, can you repeat? Sure. Uh, what amount can people bring back to the States? What, whatever. This is my friend uh, Wanda asking. Whatever you can carry. That will be the answer. There is no limit. Okay, perfect. And Once then you... I had another um, question. Let me just uh, see. Okay, what about if a client has only one day to fish? What would you recommend? Ah, well, the, if, if he's not too concerned with the weather, the best time is during the summer. No, no, no. Uh, the question is if a client has only one day to yes. fish. Yes. Not where, not, uh, not which season, but uh, for a tournament, can he only do it uh, one day? No. Uh, uh, it, it, most of the tournaments are three days, and the MVP cannot be divided by, by days. So okay. you, you, you have to participate uh, three days, or whatever the, the, the term of the term. There are some tournaments that take one single day, too. So, so, so we will have the list of all tournaments and dates and everything, so people can choose. Uh, okay. What's the best for them. okay. Thank you so much. And, uh, well, this was a wonderful, wonderful presentation. Uh, please, guys, follow us everywhere. If you have uh, any questions, just uh, go to our website, uh, the Visit Los Cabos of Travel, and uh, you might want uh, to be uh, certified uh, in Los Cabos, so you can take the Los Cabos Specialist.com. Uh, sign up for our newsletter, and then follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and uh, if you have any more questions that we can send uh, to our host today, uh, please send me an email at frosas at visitloscados.travel. Thank you to our friends from Gran Velas for hosting us uh, to be here. And you guys can see this wonderful view behind me. And uh, see you soon. See you next Wednesday. I mean, next uh, Thursday. And... Uh, we're going to keep uh, giving you guys a lots of information, interesting and useful. Thank you. Thank you so much for everyone. Uh, and uh, have a wonderful afternoon. Goodbye, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.